The overall goal of this procedure is to rapidly quantify in real time ovarian cancer cell invasion in a spheroid mesothelial cell co-culture model of metastasis. This is accomplished by firstly generating ovarian cancer spheroids from cell lines by culturing the cells under non-adherent conditions in methyl cellulose. The second step is to prepare a real-time cell analyzer CIM plate by coating the upper chamber of the two-chambered well with matrigel to mimic the basement membrane that underlies the mesothelium of the peritoneal cavity and the mesothelial lining itself. Next, the ovarian cancer spheroids are harvested and added to the upper chambers of the real-time analyzer plate wells. The final step is to program and initiate the real-time cell analyzer, which will take periodic readings at predefined intervals over a prolonged period of assay. Ultimately, the results obtained depict the continuous invasion process, which is used to determine the key factors regulating ovarian cancer cells as they invade cellular and matrix barriers. The main advantage of this technique over existing methods like standard transwell assays of cancer cell invasion is that this approach allows for continuous measurements of cancer cell invasion over extended periods of time, unlike a single endpoint assay which doesn't fully capture the dynamic nature of ovarian cancer metastases. Though this method is used to provide insight into ovarian cancer, it can also be applied to study different types of metastatic processes such as breast cancer or the extravasation of cancer cells through an endothelial layer. Likewise, it can be used to study normal cell invasion such as trophoblast invasion during embryo implantation. To prepare ovarian cancer cells for fluorescent cell labelling, First harvest cells at 75% confluency and resuspend cells at a final concentration of 1 million cells per milliliter in 1 milliliter of pre-warmed PBS per 0.1% BSA. Adding the optimal amount of spheroids per well and handling spheroids carefully are critical to the success of this procedure. Next, add 2 microliters of a 5 millimolar stock of Celltrace CSFE solution to cells at a final concentration of 10 micromolar and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes in a water bath. Quench the reaction with 1 milliliter of ice-cold medium containing 10% FBS and re-pellet by centrifugation. Resuspend in 10 milliliters of the appropriate pre-warmed growth medium and seed cells into a 75 square centimeter filter capped flask. Culture at 37 degrees Celsius, 5% carbon dioxide until the level of fluorescence labeling is adequate for detection. Begin this procedure by measuring out the volume of culture medium appropriate for each cell line, which is 15 milliliters minus the volume of cells needed for spheroid generation. Add 3 milliliters of methyl cellulose stock solution to the culture medium to achieve a final methyl cellulose concentration of 20% and mix thoroughly by gentle inversion. Add 300,000 cells to the methyl cellulose containing medium and mix thoroughly by gentle inversion. Pipette 150 microliters of the cell methyl cellulose media mix into each well of a 96 well concave bottom culture plate. This will result in a total of 3,000 cells per well. Culture in 37 degrees Celsius, 5% carbon dioxide for 1 to 4 days or until uniform spheroids form. Typically, one spheroid per well is observed. The real-time cell analyzer, or RTCA, cell invasion assay utilizes a 16-well RTCA two-chambered CIM plate. Working in groups of four wells at a time, add 50 microliters of matrix to each well of the upper chamber of the plate to ensure that the total surface area is covered. Remove 30 microliters of matrix immediately, but slowly, to get rid of any excess fluid. 
Incubate the plate at 37 degrees Celsius for 4 hours prior to use in a tissue culture incubator. After 4 hours, add 30 microliters of the serum-free medium appropriate for each cancer cell line to the upper chamber and 160 microliters of media with or without serum as per the experimental design to the lower chamber. Assemble the CIM plate by clicking the lower chamber into the upper chamber and equilibrate in a 37 degrees Celsius incubator for one hour in a tissue culture incubator. Open the RTCA program and select the Layout tab. Highlight all experimental wells, right-click on wells and select Turn on wells. Then fill in experimental conditions and cell names as desired. To add steps or sub-steps to the program, select the Schedule tab and right-click on Add a Step. The first step is a pre-programmed background sweep, which is automatically incorporated into the program once Add a Step is chosen. Enter the desired program details for Step 2 of the RTCA program, which will record readings during the establishment of the LP9 human mesothelial cell monolayer. Add the time intervals between impedance readings by selecting the Interval tab and entering 15 minutes. Add experimental duration by selecting the Duration tab and entering a time between 12 to 24 hours. Subsequent steps are added in the same way. Step 3 of the RTCA program will direct the instrument to take readings during spheroid invasion. Enter 5 minutes under the Interval tab and 48 hours under the Duration tab. Select Plate on the menu bar and save. To begin this procedure, place the CIM plate in the RTCA instrument and open the program that was saved earlier. Select Execute in the menu bar and then Start. A background sweep will automatically be performed. Following the background sweep, Remove the CIM plate from the instrument and place it in a tissue culture hood. Plate 50,000 LP9 cells suspended in 160 microliters of serum-free medium into the upper chamber of each CIM plate well. Place the plate in the RTCA instrument and take readings every 15 minutes while the LP9 monolayer is establishing overnight. On the following day, Aseptically cut 1 mm off the top of a 1 mL pipette tip and use it to gently retrieve the contents of each well. For each cell line, pull 10 spheroids in a sterile tube. Centrifuge spheroids at 120 Gs for 8 minutes and then remove methylcellulose-containing medium by gentle aspiration. Wash spheroids twice more with PBS centrifuging at 120 G's for 8 minutes to pellet spheroids after each wash. For each experimental well, resuspend a total of 10 spheroids in 160 microliters of medium without PBS. Pause the RTCA experiment by selecting Execute from the menu bar and checking Pause. Remove the CIM plate from the instrument and place it in a tissue culture hood Aspirate off the media from each well and replace with spheroid-containing media. Return the plate to the RTCA instrument. Select Execute from the menu bar and check Abort Step. The program will move to the next step automatically. To resume the experiment, select Execute from the menu bar and check Start Continue. Step 3 in the RTCA program will initiate. In this experiment, 
Two epithelial ovarian cancer cell lines, OVCA-433 and OVCA-429, and an ovarian granulosa cell tumor line, KGN, were used to generate spheroids. Following overnight culture in U-bottomed wells suspended in methyl cellulose-containing media, all three cell lines formed compact spheroid structures of approximately 400 to 500 micrometers in diameter. The bottom panels show the matching cell line grown in a monolayer. Scale bars represent 100 micrometers. Once formed, spheroids were harvested and plated on top of an LP9 mesothelial cell monolayer in an RTCA CIM plate. Images under phase contrast microscopy or under fluorescent microscopy of parallel cultures were taken periodically to aid in the interpretation of the RTCA data. It is informative to assess both the basal layer of invasion of a cancer cell line as well as chemo-attracted induced invasion. In this example, basal invasiveness is measured by the addition of serum-free medium, or SFM, to both the upper and lower chambers. Complete media with 10% FBS, which contains many potential chemoattractants, is used to examine chemoattractant-induced invasion. Shown here are representative results from a comparison of cell invasion between the KGN cells and the LP9 mesothelial cells. The RTCA invasion assay was conducted with and without FBS in the bottom chamber of a CIM plate. Results are shown as mean positive minus SD cell index from triplicate wells at the 24-hour time point and over an entire two-day assay period. These results confirm that LP9 cells are minimally invasive over two days under either basal or chemoattractant-induced conditions and thus were a good cell type to use in co-culture assays with ovarian cancer cells. In contrast, KGN ovarian cancer spheroids exhibited the capacity to invade toward a chemoattractant. This graph presents results from a comparison of the invasive capacity of KGN, OVCA-429 and OVCA-433 cell lines depicted over a 24-hour period. Over the two-day assay, all three cell lines exhibited the capacity to invade toward a chemoattractant, as indicated by the increasing cell indices. The cell lines exhibited similar rates of invasion, as indicated by the parallel line slopes of the curves. However, the OVCA-429 curve exhibited a higher upper asymptote, which indicated a higher maximal level of invasion compared to the other cell lines. In contrast, basal levels of invasion of all cell lines were low. Furthermore, the cell lines exhibited differences in their times to onset of invasion, as shown by a more detailed analysis of invasion data over a 2.5-hour time period. The KGN cells invade the cell and matrix barriers quickly, while the OVC-433 and OVC-429 cells take three and five times longer to invade, respectively. Importantly, their behaviors at the onset of invasion were not predicative of their overall capacity for invasion. This suggests different inherent capabilities of the cancer cell lines, but may also indicate that different factors regulate early and late invasive behaviors of spheroids. Once mastered, this technique is readily adaptable to study various signaling molecules and cellular pathways within the peritoneal microenvironment that affect the metastatic behaviour. This can be achieved by the addition of exogenous growth factors, cytokines or inhibitors to either the bottom or top chamber of the well. Alternatively, you can genetically manipulate the cancer cells themselves or the peritoneal target cells.